Hey guys, we're gonna go live on YouTube shortly. Stand by as we get everything up and ready. Hey guys, we're gonna go live on YouTube shortly. Stand by as we get everything up and ready. As we get everything up and ready. No, 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 very online, you know, presentation. All right, guys, we are standing by to go live soon. Just hang in there. All right, guys, we are standing by to go live soon. Just hang in there.
Just checking everything, guys. Just checking. Good night, Julian. Good night, all. Just making sure that everything runs smoothly tonight. Can somebody check over YouTube, please, and make sure that we're coming across clear, please? Can somebody check on YouTube and tell me that we're coming across clear? Let's go on the YouTube channel and check and let me know. We're going to go live in a minute. Tamara, stand by to do the introductions. Sanju, I have a little issue because when I make you host, I'm not seeing a co-host option for me. And when I, I am not the host, I cannot screen share. So it's a challenge. It's a type of account that you have. Oh, yes, I got a cheap one. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Can I get a report from YouTube? Is YouTube coming across clear people? Can I get a YouTube comment? I'm gonna go live on TikTok also. It's just counting down on YouTube. So I guess when you go live, we'll see. Um, so it just says like in three, three minutes and 35 seconds. It's just a countdown right there, right now. Let me check on it. Try to try to buy the I could go with all the fifty or well yes I actually heard everything you just said <laughs> on YouTube. I'm even hearing Tamara on YouTube as well. Tamara maybe on the wrong one. So there are two on two Yeah, there are there are Two things. The one is called one is called one. Okay, Julian, I see you say yes, Doc, on YouTube. Okay, I should have said yes, Doc, here, but okay. Go airplane mode, Bluetooth devices turn off. So anybody you have that's when the room gets full, we can send them to YouTube. Just send out a couple more reminders in the next few seconds. That two minutes, I'm gonna send some reminders to persons who are on. I have to remind them.
Good night, everyone. Hi, right, Trisha. Good night. Good night. Hey, all the one. A long time, I'm not hear your voice. If I'm not come from Zoom, I'm not hear your voice. You're so busy. So you're all right. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello, Trisha. How are you, sugar? I'm okay, honey. Okay. Hi, Sandrine. Sandrine. Oh, she mute. She mute. What's up? What's up? Not much. There. Take on the challenges of life. The daily challenges. One day, one day, one day. I'm gonna tell you. No problem. Just let me know when. Thank you. But the, um, Dr. Thomas is having an echo only, echo only when you speak. speak. When they mute your mic. You in echo still? No, 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 no much, no, much better. better. But who answer a while ago, Sandrine? Maybe she have on YouTube, no, no. no. Yes, she I did. Sandrine, yours were, it was echoing. Okay, yes, I'm watching the YouTube as well, that's why. Oh, but you're not echoing now. Okay. All right, cool. Okay, guys, we are ready to begin. Tamara, you can go ahead with your opening remarks. Then we'll take it from there. Mario, you're mute. We're not hearing you. Oh, hello. Thank you. My apologies. I, I didn't realize that. Thank you so much. Yeah, as I was saying, there are some of you who may be new to our group. Um, Dr. Thomas is not really a big fan of huge intro, so I'll be expedient. Um, I learned that doctor actually the root word means teacher. He's passionate about teaching and connecting with people. And tonight we are on another fun learning adventure. And so our topic tonight is going to be looking at super memory. Um, Dr. Thomas is married. He has three beautiful kids and he is, he goes to the Bendan SDA church. And as I said, he's passionate about teaching. So over to you, Dr. Thomas. Yeah, that was quick, quick. All right, let me get my live on. Mm -hmm. TikTok going just at the same time. All right. Good night, everyone. I am pleased to be here with you another night to do what I absolutely love to do, which is, as Tamara said, teach. 
And the beautiful thing about teaching and, and which you'll learn this evening is when you teach, you learn a lot more yourself. In order for me to teach you, I have to go do research. For, for this presentation, for example, which I hope to spend about an hour and a half with you, it would have taken me maybe 10, 12 hours to prepare for it, maybe more. Can you imagine the amount of information, the amount of new things that I've learned, the amount of old things that were reinforced in my preparation for this? So doing this benefits me a whole lot. And you guys should get into the habit of trying to impart knowledge a little more to those who you know you lead and that will reinforce um, your knowledge and reinforce your you know, your skills and help you to become even better in whatever year area you, you find yourself working. So this is an absolute pleasure for me. Tonight, the topic is a very relevant one to every single person. As you try to learn, it's important for you to be able to re retain and recall. And so this topic has been near and dear to me. I've spent days and weeks in the past reading books and trying to figure out ways to enhance my memory. I'm going to have some difficulty here in trying to admit people to the room. Um, let me see how I can get these two things being done together simultaneously. All right, let me see, get this window over here. All right, so, all right, so we have persons on YouTube now. We have persons on TikTok that's joining me live. Those persons on TikTok won't be able to see the slides, but you can certainly hear the information and share, and I'll switch back and forth uh, and try to multitask something that I'll emphasize that you try not to do during this presentation. Now, tonight's topic is an exciting one, as I said. It's super memory. And the reality is that super memory is not the, you know, the possession of a lucky few. It is not something that uh, you're blessed with and nobody else has. All of us has excellent memory, but not all of us have well-trained memory to be able to use when we wanted to. But you would admit that there are lots of amazing things that you would have been able to, to remember over the years. So in my daily work, for example, I see tons of patients. And when a person comes in front of me or sees me on the road or calls me on the phone, I say, Doc. Yo, yo, hold on, hold on. Let's try and this off. Mr. Unknown, please mute your mic. Let me can do this. <laughs> All right. Um, so persons would call me on the phone and would ask me, for example, uh, Doc, that medication you gave me, um, how was I supposed to take it? And they expect that I'm going to remember their name, remember their medication, remember their history, and be able to relate to them based on this information they gave me. And every day I am asked to do that, and I have to do it remember tons of information for thousands of patients every single day. And you too, in your job and in your personal life, you may see a friend that you haven't seen in maybe 20, 30 years. And suddenly, as you see that face, memories of interactions keep coming back. Songs that you enjoy to get a place that you went. You're able to bring back into the present experiences that were long gone in the past. That is an amazing feat. And you don't realize that you can apply that same ability to every single area of life, including your work and your studies to achieve amazing results. So I claim to be one of those persons who have been able to learn to develop my memory to the extent that I can't recall failing an exam in a long time, maybe before grade 10. I have gotten good grades on every exam I've sat and I've been able to remember thousands of bits of information around uh, my job specifically. And it's not something that I alone or there a few can do. You all will learn tonight how to actually do that. Hold on, people who are joining me on TikTok, you have to be mute. I'm on another, hold on, no man, hold on. All right, guys, you're gonna have to be mute and be quiet because I need to be able to hear. All right, no. Okay, so we're gonna look at a number of different topics. Causes of poor memory. We're gonna look at, uh, hold on a sec, guys. This is, 
Pause. No, no, I'm, I'm, in, I'm very busy. You're here to say, Doctor? It's closed. I'm sorry. No, no, that's why I'm back in. Sir, I'm very busy right now. Come back another time, please. Yeah. Doing at the office. All right. So focus, we're going to look at memory enhancing techniques. We're going to look at sleep. We're going to look at stress reduction, exercise, nutrition, and herbal supplements. So we're going to look at a number of issues tonight to help you get better memory. Now, the first thing I want to touch on is what causes people to have poor memory. And as I go through this list, you're going to be thinking and trying to figure out how has this affected you or will affect you in the future? And I'm going to try to give remedies for these things as I go through the presentation tonight. So the first cause of poor memory is lack of interest. Persons don't remember things because they aren't paying attention, they aren't interested. So if somebody may tell you their name or may share information with you in a classroom. I remember when I was going to school, I was so not interested in Spanish. I had no interest in that subject. And so I didn't remember much. I didn't do well, but I did love chemistry and, and geography, for example. So I paid attention. I had interest. It made a connection with me and so I remembered more. So that's one of the main reasons why persons don't remember. They don't have interest in the subject. So if you, you know, pay attention and become interested, your memory will improve in that area. Dementia I'll touch on later on. It's a sometimes age-related age -related decline in memory brain function because of buildup of plaque or poor blood flow to the brain, previous small strokes, brain injuries, various things can contribute to dementia and it really robs persons of their entire life. I said to another audience this evening that if you were to make a list of all the diseases that you could have as you get older, dementia would be the last one on your list because when you get dementia, you really lose everything. You lose memory of your friends and family. You lose the memory of all your accomplishments. You lose memory of everything you've read and learned. You lose the ability to do things that you previously could do. You're totally dependent on other people for everything. And it's a disease where you basically becomes dead before you die. It's a real horrible disease. Deficiencies in nutrients can cause poor memory, and we're going to touch on a few later on, like omega-3 deficiency, that can cause poor memory. Brain inflammation can cause poor memory too, and we'll look at how to reduce that. Medications that you take, you know, antidepressants, for example, and antipsychotic drugs all come with memory issues, and so these drugs are to be used with caution and only when necessary. Sedentary lifestyles and persons who are not active and exercising you lose memory by just sitting down. You lose memory by watching television. That affects your brain. Uh, number seven on the list is going to be stress. Stress raises your cortisol level, and that destroys your brain cells. That destroys brain connections. So you lose memory that you previously had, and your brain becomes slower. So your recall, your, your ability to go into your brain and bring up information that's stored is significantly uh, limited. Um, by you being stressed chronically. In the short term, though, some of you will admit when exam stress is on and you're running out of time, you are able to bring back things very quickly. Um, so short term stress might be useful. Deadlines might be useful in helping you to remember. But when the stress becomes chronic, like a relationship stress, like a job stress, you know, like a disease state that you have, this will affect your memory. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is insomnia. You not being able to sleep properly or choosing not to sleep is going to hit your memory really hard. So especially when you're studying, we'll find out that you, there's a point beyond which we, you go in studying and missing sleep and you start to affect your memory negatively. So let's get into it um, as I share. So the first thing I want to talk about here is the fact that most persons fail to remember because they lack focus. So even before I get into the food and the supplements, I think that's the number one reason why students don't remember, why adults don't remember, why you forget things in your job because you aren't focused. Focus means that you're paying attention to what you're doing or trying to learn. The idea of multitasking is a detriment to, to memory. When you're studying, 
and listening to music. You can't study effectively or listen to music effectively. What you're actually doing is rapidly switching back and forth between what you're reading and the music. So you're 50% or 20% focused on the music and 50 or 80% focused on the studying. If you're gonna study, you are gonna have to use instrumental or uh, music that doesn't have words that can be just in the background without you having to listen to it necessarily. It just creates a little ambiance. So you pretending to study good with music, it's you tricking yourself. You studying and having your phone and having a television in the background, having people walking, it is gonna prevent you from focusing. I have had the experience and maybe you of reading an entire page. And when you're done, you can't remember exactly what you read. You can't make sense of it. Sometimes the material is difficult, but sometimes it is that your mind is elsewhere. You're not focused on what you're reading. So the words are just going through your mouth, through your mind, but it isn't making sense. So guys, number one rule to remember is to focus. And the number one thing on here on my slide is to have a study hygiene technique that's next to none. And you'll see tonight my slides for those who can see the slides on YouTube. The slides are clean and very simply laid out. Study hygiene basically means that you remove all distractions, right? Turn off the phone, yeah? And some of you guys who know me, will you will never hear my phone ring because I do not have a ringtone. My phone never rings aloud. My phone is always on silent. I don't want to be disturbed when I'm working. I don't want to be disturbed when I'm reading. I don't want to be disturbed at all. So I'll get back to you on a WhatsApp message when you call me because a phone ringing is gonna distract me from my patient who I'm speaking to, I need to pay attention to. My ability to diagnose properly is gonna be dependent on how well I can focus on what that patient is saying, really listen to them and make sense of the information, right? So it's important for you guys to have a proper study hygiene, a nice quiet place where you alone or you and your study partner can be isolated and be in a cocoon. Meditation helps you to focus. So meditation is one technique that you can use to improve your ability to focus and concentrate. So you may be doing prayer or just sitting down, humming a song, sitting down, breathing deeply and focusing on your breathing. There are various ways you can meditate and this will improve your ability to focus and pay attention and stop getting so easily distracted. The reason you can remember a movie so well is that when the movie grabs you, you're focused on the movie. Somebody call you, you don't even hear them calling because the movie holds you. If you could pay attention to your book and to whatever you're studying on your Bible, just like that, you'll remember a lot more. All right, acupressure, guys. I'm going to spend a little bit, minute on here. This is a, another technique to help you to focus, help you to remember and concentrate. So there are these acupressure points on your body, which if you stimulate them, um, they actually um, can improve your focus and memory. So you would know that whenever people are stressed, they may put their two fingers, you know, usually your middle finger and your index finger to your temples and you massage slowly, close your eyes. What you didn't know is that that's an acupressure, acupuncture point that relaxes your brain, increases memory concentration and focus. So whenever you're going to do something or you feel stressed and tired, you're not focusing, you can do that simple technique for two, three minutes, just massage the area with these two fingers and your memory will improve. But you need to probably do all four that I'm showing on the screen here. So there's another acupressure point called the third eye that's in the middle of your forehead, right between your, your brows right there. And you can put your finger on there and press on there uh, firmly for about a minute or two minutes. There's two acupressure points called the gate of conscience behind your neck around here. That's right there, right at the nape of your neck. And you can press on those and there are acupressure points right between your big and second toe. So doing this routine of pressing each of those points for a minute at a time to two minutes will relax you, increase your focus and concentration and allow you to remember more and be more focused. So take a snapshot of this slide. It's very important to try these techniques. Now, memory enhancing techniques. So we're not getting into the food yet, guys. So we're still talking about techniques. I'm gonna 
show you guys some of the really advanced techniques that I have used over the years to get great results in whatever year I said, no matter how difficult the topic, how long the list of things to remember, we doctors have to remember them. And we have special techniques that we use that many people habitually fail to use. So if you're a student, that's what you pay attention here now. So the number one is to make stories in your head of whatever you're studying to make it stick. And I'm gonna come back to the making stories in the next slide. Use acronyms or mnemonics, right? This helps you to remember lists of things, record on paper, writing down everything that you do on paper. You would basically read it. And I'll say it down the bottom here, read aloud, say things out aloud and write it down. Those three things when combined doubles your retention rate, literally. Try to understand what you're studying and don't swap. Some people try to swat and don't understand. When you, when you understand, memory becomes much easier. That was a great advantage I had when I went to high school. I tried to understand the reason for the maths and chemistry formulas. And so once I understood, I could even generate them myself rather than trying to swat a formula. Exercise your brain. Exercising your brain um, is going to be um, something that, you know, you can use um, to improve your memory. This would include doing things like crossword puzzles, playing Scrabble, playing games like chess that involve strategy. These are brain exercises that improve the number of connections that your brain will be making and thus increase your memory capacity. Teach someone, you have to understand to teach. And when you teach, you're doing anything over again and you're reinforcing it. So these are proven techniques that if you guys knew me in high school, you knew I used them extensively. Now, how do you remember all of this? I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you two techniques. So one technique, I, I basically made this slide for you to remember uh, everything here. So if you realize, if you look down, the words, the first letter of each word here spells a word. What's the word? It's markets. Market. So the word markets is used here. So I deliberately did this. So you can use this technique to remember everything on the list. M for make stories, A for acronym and mnemonics, R record on paper, no and don't swat, exercise your brain, teach someone, say things out aloud. These are, this is one technique that you can use to help you to remember lists of things. And I've used this extensively. And in med school, we got a lot of mnemonics passed on to us and we made up our own, and I still use them even now. Um, all right, here's another one that's coming up at the end, guys. I'm gonna teach you how to remember the entire presentation. Now, here's another um, exercise for you. So everybody, you're gonna to need to do this exercise, okay? So if you have a paper near you, a pencil, a pen, get it. This exercise, I'm gonna call out these words, Argentina, Breadfruit, gasoline, refresh, university, lamp, brown, ship, burger, fire, helicopter, monster. Right? I've tried to make them as unrelated as possible. So there are three and four, seven, four, eleven, and one, twelve words that I just called out. Now, Look at them for another few seconds. I'm going to call them again for those who are not seeing the screen. Argentina, breadfruit, gasoline, refresh, university, lamp, brown, ship, burger, fire, helicopter, monster. I'm going to come off the screen, right, and ask you now how many of you can remember those words in the exact order that I gave you them. You saw them for a few seconds. I'm gonna give you guys 20 seconds to write them down and tell me how many of the words you can remember in the same order that I just gave you them. 20 seconds. And you guys can comment in the chat. Or you can open your mic and say if you're able to remember how many can you remember in order 
I'm going to put it back on the screen now. Somebody said, not fear. All right, so I'm going to put it back on the screen. And you guys tell me now, how, how much were you able to remember in the order that they were put on the screen? Somebody said top five. All right, somebody was able to remember. All right, lamb brown ship, burger, fire, helicopter, good. Somebody remember seven, somebody remember only four. All right, so there are numbers. So one person, Tamara, seemed to have, or Tammy, I don't know yet, was able to remember all seven of them. So for it to you, maybe uh, you're able to do exactly what I'm going to teach you guys. Now, the way to one, one technique to remember all these things is to use a journey technique. So the journey would be going from place to place in a very familiar environment, right? So I'm going to use my body today as the journey, right? I'm going to start from head and go down to toe, right? No, um, yeah. So we're going to start. So we're going to try to make this, this, this journey as weird as possible. And you're going to use your imagination. So close your eyes and imagine now. So Argentina is the first word. Now that's a country in South America. Everybody knows that Lionel Messi is from Argentina. So I'm gonna imagine on top of my head is Lionel Messi in his Argentina jersey, right? Lifting um, the World Cup. So Argentina, Lionel Messi is on top of my head wearing the Argentina jersey, blue and white, right? So that's the first thing, that's the head. I'm gonna come down to my eyes and my eyes are actually two large roast breadfruits. I don't have eyes, I have two large roast breadfruits in my eyes, and that's what's at my eyes. And I'm coming down the line now, guys. So Argentina, on my head, all right? So gasoline. And so, guys, there is a, out of my nose, I'm coming down now, there's gasoline coming out of my nose, that's feeding the fire that's roasting breadfruit in my eyes. Okay, gasoline coming out of my nose and, it's, and a fire is blazing from my nose, roasting the breadfruit in my eyes. Let's imagine that as we go along, all right? Come down onto your mouth and you're breathing out, out of your mouth, right? Some refresh eye drops. So you're spitting refresh eye drops that you use, you know, that refresh thing, yeah, that brand. Um, so you're basically spitting out, refresh out of your mouth. And when you're spitting out, refresh out of your mouth, the refresh bottle is dropping on the ground, right? So you come down to your neck now, right? And around your neck, basically, is a big chain. A big chain around your neck with a university building on the chain. So there's a big building of a university on that chain around your neck, and it's hanging down around your neck. Big university engraved into that chain, right? That's on your chest. You come down now to your belly button. At your neighbor, right? On your neighbor, you're gonna imagine, you know, them old time lamp, yeah, old time lamp on your neighbor, and it has cursing oil in it, and you'll see the smoke coming out of it, and the wick and everything that's in your neighbor. That wick is coming out. There's a lamp right there giving giving light, and they come down now to your thighs, right? And on your thighs, you're gonna imagine a big brown dog, right? Big brown dog, and he's barking barking profusely, big brown dog barking, and the name is Brownie, of course, big brown dog barking, and he's barking at your knee. What's on your knee? On your knee is a big ship with a whole pump on it, and they're shooting at this dog, and the dog is barking at them. So big brown dog, and there's a ship on your knee, it's barking. And move from your knee down, down, to, your, down to your leg, right? Down to your leg, on your, on, on your shin, right? Uh, is, is a building. There's a big building on your leg, and that building is a Burger King building, right? And there are burgers being, being thrown out through the window. People are catching. Imagine people are the hairs on your, on, your, on, on, your, on your legs are people catching the burger, right? And go down to your toe now. Go down to your toe, and there is fire blazing from your toes. And some of the burgers from your leg are dropping in the fire, and they're burning up. Imagine these big burgers dropping down on the fire, and the fire is blazing. And you are running, right? You're running, running towards a helicopter. Fire blazing if you run towards a helicopter, right? So, so a helicopter is right in front of you, about to take off, and you run towards a helicopter. And guess where you're running from? There's a monster behind you. You're running hard. There's all this going on. No, 
I'm going to give you 20 seconds. Again, now to write down all that you can remember from the list. Take off the list of the screen. Using the story. See so if you can remember what, what, what I just told you uh, with the story. You have 20 seconds. Let me see if anybody will improve their score from the last time. All right, and guys, the room is filling up. Um, so for those of you who have friends joining and can't join, you can join on YouTube. The YouTube channel is live. Okay, and TikTok too. Okay, you can join on TikTok at Thomas Medical Center. You can join on YouTube live. All right, guys. So let's go. Let's see who was going to be able to remember more. Can't imagine Messi. <laughs> Come on, guys. Post those scores for me. All right, Tommy did 12, okay. Anybody else? Joan improved from, I think, 48 or something. Okay, Sandrine was old, I remember seven. Some people remember nine. So we're seeing some better scores. So basically, we just one take with my story, you're able to remember a little bit more. So this is one technique that you no know, memory masters use to remember long details. And the journey can be however long. You can use your house, you know, from a get into your driveway and you use your house where you use it as a cue to imagine weird. Jody and remember 10 out of the 12 with the story I just told her. So this is a somebody here move from three to eight, um, basically. So um, this technique of making weird stories with your imagination and linking it to details into remember is a proven technique to help you to remember what you need to remember. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next step now. All right. Um, all right, guys, um, here's another technique now. Um, the brain exercises that may help to improve your memory right with both hands. This helps you to get out of your routine. We have what we call neuroplasticity neuroplasticity means that your brain is not as rigid as we once thought your brain can actually grow and change we thought that once you reach a certain age your brain matured and that was it we now know that your brain is plastic with each experience and each new technique you learn your brain changes and make new connections and the more connections it makes the better memory you can have and the more recall you can have so when you're practicing writing with one hand every day, that's something you do without even thinking. But when you change and start writing with your other hand, your brain is forced to make new connections and learn new pathways. Just like riding a bicycle. Drive with both hands. That helps to train your brain and make new connections. Brush your teeth with alternate hands. That helps too. Learn something new every single day. Some new words, a new language. Play games, I mentioned before like Sudoku or playing Scrabble or playing chess. Remember people's phone numbers. I'm into the habit now of just relying on my phone to recall phone numbers for me. I may right now be able to tell you five people numbers out of my head. Most numbers I really don't know. But practicing to remember numbers is a great way to train your brain and improve your memory. Use your imagination, read books. We keep telling people watching television makes you dumber. Reading books make you smarter. Why? Because in order to read a book, you are reading words on a paper and you have to now use those words to create an image in your mind. The author may try to, you know, in word, you know, um, depict a scene where there is trees and shrubs and flowers. He tells you the colors. He tells you what sounds the birds are making. He tells you the smell of the cooking down the road. He tells you um, the sky is overcast and it's about to rain. And he tells you the persons who are in your scene. And you have to use your brain to create this whole scene and, and, and make it real for you. This is one of the highest levels of brain training that you could ever undergo. 
reading makes you smarter, reading improves your memory, watching television makes you dumber. Now guys, sleep. This is an important and indispensable part of getting memory. Now, it's the common habit of persons who are studying when it comes down to exam time to skip sleeping and stay up late studying. Now, this might be necessary in one or two instances when you have run out of time and information is so much, but I'd have you know that your brain works like a computer. In a computer, you have what is called temporary memory or the RAM, where when you put information, so for example, back in the day, Tamara and Sandrine, there was a time when we didn't have auto save, right, on Microsoft Word. You had to press the save button because if light gone and then the days light go very often and you didn't finish typing or press save, you'd lose everything. Now we have laptops and things with battery backup. We didn't have that back in the day. It's just plug in and that was it. And then you find that if you, if you type something in Microsoft Word and didn't save it, when the computer shuts down, you'd lose it. So you'd have to go over again. But if you press the save button, then it would be saved on the hard drive. So even if light went away, you'd have it to, to use again. Your brain works this way. Except that the save button is pressed when you sleep. So when you read something, you hold it in your temporary menu, memory, and, and it remains there while you're online. And this gets converted to long-term memory when you go into deep sleep, stage three or REM sleep. If you get a little nap, that may not help. You need to get into at least a hour and a half, two hours of sleep to really start encoding things from your temporary memory to your permanent memory. And so if you're studying, and the thing is, whatever you've studied, for example, study for four hours, you cannot then sleep for one hour and expect to remember it. You have to sleep for the appropriate amount of time. If you went to school for eight hours, go and sleep for four, you're going to forget half of what you, you would have learned because you did not spend enough time for that saving um, you know, program to run. The program probably run halfway and wake up. It's just like saving someone a computer. If it's a lot of data, it takes time to save. You see that little icon running along, yes? So you need to sleep for the appropriate amount of time based on what you want to remember. And if you don't get enough sleep, you're going to forget details. You will not encode them into permanent memory and so they will not be recalled. Stress is an important part of memory. Very important, right? We know that when you're stressed, it raises your cortisol level. And as I mentioned at the start, short-term stress may be helpful. Short-term stress might actually help you to remember because it raises your adrenaline and you know your blood flow is improved and your brain is working faster. But long-term stress, stress going over weeks and months, raises your cortisol level and this actually destroys brain connection. It makes your brain connection slower. Your recall is poor when you are stressed long-term. Stress actually affects a couple parts of the brain. Uh, we call the amygdala and the hippocampus. The amygdala works in the hippocampus to take information from your temporary memory and consolidate it into, into long-term memory. Stress basically reduces the efficiency of how this process works. And so long-term stress, whether it be relationship stress people, job stress, money stress, health issues, it's gonna affect your memory. But there's something interesting about stress that we discovered. Stress is not so much really what's happening, it's not about the amount of work you have or the amount of money that you owe or the amount of kids you have that are giving you problems. It's about your perception of the stress. So persons who are in a difficult job persons who had deadlines to meet, persons who were running low on time and did not perceive that they were stressed, they did not suffer the consequences of stress. But persons who, 
you know, kept telling themselves, overwhelmed, I'm stressed, I can't manage. Those were the persons who saw the negative effects of stress. So the environment that you're in is almost irrelevant. What is more relevant is how you perceive and respond to what's happening around you. So stress is subjective and stress is a mental construct. You make up stress in your mind, right? Stress is not something that happens to you, something that you create with your imagination, right? So I know, for example, that there are persons who have no kids and they are stressed. Equally, there are persons who have five kids and they are stressed. There are persons who have two children and they can't manage and they are stressed. There are persons with, with a beautiful job and the job is stressful. There are persons with no job and they are stressed. There are persons who have, you know, no money in their bank account and they are stressed. There are persons who have 10 million in their bank account and they are stressed. So whatever situation you find yourself in, you can determine if you're going to allow it to get you down, get you off focus, get you distracted. Yeah, you can determine if you're going to make of your hell heaven or make of your heaven hell. It is a matter of perception. And I know, yes, you'll tell me that you have real problems. Yes, people, I understand you may have lost a relative, a loved one. You may have lost a job. You may have been injured. You may have a disease. But I will tell you a beautiful story. You know, um, about four months ago, and I don't know if he's online watching, I was in my office and my staff may remember this young man. He came to my office because he was brought here in an emergency. He had fallen off a breadfruit tree. And based on his estimation, it was about 20 feet he fell from the tree down into a gully. And when he came to the office, I perceived that he had broken his hip. This was a young man in his 20s. Young family, fall off a tree, almost dead and break his hip, right? And he said, boy, that came at a bad time. I really had some things going on that I really need to get done. A house was being built and so on. But my life is spared. And he was smiling. And we had a good conversation in my office. We prayed together. And I sent him off to Cape And I said to him, young man, I don't know why this happened to you. But maybe there is a work that God has for you to do in that water, Cape Page. Why you break your hip? And together, we both agreed that this could turn out positive. You know? He came back to me a few weeks later, having done surgery, come out of Cape and said, Doc, you would never believe what happened. In the hospital, people saved. I pray for people and I'm healed. This young man came back to me to tell me a testimony of how his tragedy led to a blessing, not only for him, but for so many others. Oh, somebody said, that's my cousin. Okay, awesome. All right, so somebody bearing... Witness to the story. I right? know the story is real. It's like, yeah, and I could tell you so many other stories, people, of persons who have been through tragic circumstances. I was able to put it, spin it into a positive way so that it didn't stress them but became a blessing. Um, so that's stress reduction. But stress reduction, people, you need to focus on spending time with yourself, spending time with those you love, thinking positive, thinking about what makes you happy, Bad things are going to be happening throughout your life. You're either going to be in a crisis, going into a crisis, or coming out of a crisis. Your life will be one crisis to another. That's what life is. So don't get hung up on the crises and forget that there is a blessing and there are beautiful things around you every day to enjoy. Life will pass you by. And you will actually have better memory by reducing your stress. So work on getting rid of stress out of your life, not by getting rid of problems, but by focusing on what's positive. Spend time in nature. Spend time doing things that are relaxing. Spend time with positive people. Spend time with people that encourage you and build you up. You know, it's said that you're going to be about the average of the five closest people to you, yeah? So if you have five broke pocket people who are your friends, guess what? You're going to broke too. If you have five overweight people that are your friends, you're going to be overweight too. If you have five brilliant people that are your friends, they're going to be brilliant too. If you have five people that are going where you want to go, you're going to get there because you have company. 
if you have people around you who complain and find fault every day, you're going to become like them. So choose carefully who you hang around with, who you spend time with, and who you give, you know, even your help and attention to. Somebody say on the screen, you show me your company, I'll tell you who you are. This is true. So when your parents warn you when you're young, young people are watching, do not keep company with those persons. It's because they know the influence is going to be great. And guess what? The peer pressure doesn't just, doesn't just uh, affect the young people. It affects old people as well. Yeah? Peer pressure affects us all. No matter what age you are, choose your company wisely. All right, I'm getting to the juicy part. All right, hold on. My screen giving me some trouble, guys. Yes, some people are single, my friend. Somebody said on, on, on TikTok, some people are single and they are worried that they don't have no husband. But guess what? Some of the most stressed people are married people. <laughs> they are stressed because they have problems in their marriage. So don't, um, you know, be who concerned about circumstances, be concerned about your state of mind. My computer screen has gone blank here. All right, it's come back now. All right, let me see if I can get back to where I was uh, as we focus on, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, people. Let me see if I can get this back here. Present. All right, I'm not able to get it back yet. All right, so I'm not coming back yet. I'm coming, everybody. Just give me a second while I try to get back my presentation online. I'm going to have to go with it as it is there. All right. All right, people. All right, so I'm going to have to go with it like this. All right, exercise is the next one that we're going to talk about. Exercise is going to be essential for your memory. All right? Um, exercise. You know, study in Europe, they looked at persons who had mild cognitive impairment, persons who were in their 50s and 60s and 70s who started to forget simple things like where they put things, people's names, um, you know, things that they started doing. And they put them on an exercise program, 40 minute exercise, three times a week, and watch them for three months. They did brain scans, PET scans before and after. And after only three months, exercise, the size of the hippocampus in their brain increased. Some, some of them even twofold. Hippocampus is the relay station for memory. And they were able to recall better concentrate better and do better on memory tasks after just three months of exercise exercise improves blood flow to your brain changes brain connections and it improves your memory and there are so many other benefits nutrition there are some foods guys that are very good for your memory and i want to tell you that these foods are abundant, available. Some are cheap, some are not so cheap. And the list is here. Avocados, my favorite fruit, contain soluble fiber, polyunsaturated fats, and a huge host of antioxidants for your brain. Beetroot, that deep rich color, is anti-inflammatory and reduces inflammation in your brain, reduces the risk of Alzheimer's. Berries, same category. We're talking about blueberries, cherries, mulberries, raspberries. These have been studied clinically and found to reduce the risk of Alzheimer's dementia, reduce the risk of vascular dementia, improve memory scores in as little as three months. And so you should consume these fruits regularly throughout your life. Broccoli, celery represent greens, and these particular greens and others have been shown to improve blood flow to your brain, improve oxygen delivery, 
and reduce buildup of plaque and waste in your brain. Coconut oil and olive oil. Coconut oil specifically has what we call MCT oil, which is medium chain triglycerides. And these are efficient fuel for your brain. Your brain can use the oil from coconut without it being digested. So having coconut oil in your cooking, or better yet, just having a couple of teaspoons of coconut oil every single day, olive oil, maybe five teaspoons a day, is a known way to boost your memory. There is research going on now with MCG oil to treat persons with severe dementia, and they are seeing amazing results. So we have coconut in Jamaica, a coconut jelly, a coconut oil that can boost your memory significantly. Dark chocolate is another one I want to speak about. We in Jamaica have cocoa on trees and we get chocolate in the market. You don't need to go and buy Hershey's and these expensive brands with sugar and dairy in it. Get your original chocolate and make teas or make chocolate drinks with them. Chocolate contains lots of magnesium, lots of fibromyalgia, lots of vitamins and minerals that will boost your memory significantly. Egg yolks, I mentioned in a previous video that is the ultimate superfood. Egg yolk contains proteins, contains cholesterol, which is actually good, guys. Cholesterol um, is actually good for your brain. Your brain is significant amount of fat, and cholesterol is used to make lots of things in your brain, including your cell membranes in your brain. So the cell membrane stability, the ability of your cells to communicate in your brain depend on having healthy amounts of cholesterol. And so persons who take overdoses, well, too much of high cholesterol drugs and drop the cholesterol too low, there's an association with low cholesterol from cholesterol drugs and dementia. So a lot of my patients will tell me that their doctor said that even when their cholesterol is low, they should still take their cholesterol drugs because there's a benefit. Yes, there's a benefit. Cholesterol drugs cause decreased inflammation and that's how they benefit you, not by dropping the cholesterol. So what if there was a way to decrease inflammation without taking the cholesterol drug? There is. It's all these food that I'm talking about. So if you have a normal cholesterol, there is absolutely no need for the normal person to be taking cholesterol drugs, which is going to drop your cholesterol and give you dementia. This is something you need to discuss with your doctor. Seriously, if my cholesterol is normal. Can I find other ways of getting brain inflammation down? Salmon is a food that I need to mention here. Salmon is rich in omega-3. Omega-3 fatty acids are what form the myelin sheet for your brain, for your nerve cells. This is what protects your nerves. And this is what gets destroyed when you have, for example, multiple sclerosis. But salmon and other fishes and also flax seed and chia seed are rich sources of omega-3. And this is, in fact, a brain and memory food. Turmeric, awesome. Rich in curcumin. It's an anti-inflammatory that reduces inflammation in your brain, and brain inflammation causes memory problems. So this is a sure way to protect your brain. Turmeric may not boost your memory that much, but it protects your brain throughout your lifetime. So as you get older, you're not getting older. Nuts, nuts are going to be important. Walnuts, for example, they shape like your brain, they contain lots of vitamin E. And this is a rich antioxidant that prevents brain damage from all the other poisons that you're taking in your box juice and bottle drinks and different processed foods. Uh, antioxidants, uh, such as vitamin E, is key for the health of your brain. Um, herbs and supplements, there are a number of them that you can actually take in. But the ones that you want to focus on, um, that's going to boost memory. So the first one I have on this here is caffeine that you can get from coffee and green tea. Now, coffee and caffeine has very negative side effects for some persons. It raise your heart, send your blood pressure up, can be addictive. So, you know, this one is with some reluctance that I recommend that persons drink this thing. But we've noticed in studies that persons who drink coffee and have caffeine have more attention, attentiveness to a certain point. Um, they have better memory recall and they can do memory tasks better. It does help to improve brain blood flow. So that's a fact that I want to share with you. So there is a benefit there. It's not all negative. Vitamin B12 is an excellent vitamin for your nerves and it's absolutely necessary for memory. If you have low B12, for example, if you're a vegetarian or you have bowel problems and have difficulty absorbing it, you may end up with faster rates of dementia. And so protecting your brain with vitamin B12 supplements are going to be key. Ginseng 
It's another good um, brain tonic to boost memory and attentiveness. Omega-3 fish, as I mentioned before, ginkgo biloba is an age-old remedy for memory. It's been studied widely. It's been found to be effective, but unfortunately, most brands on the market are useless. They just ride the hype of ginkgo biloba and having it very poor quality sources and the, the, and the parts of the plant that aren't beneficial. So ginkgo biloba have to be taken with uh, a bit of wisdom with particular brands. Um, I want to mention here um, rhodiola, which is another good supplement you can get that helps with memory a lot. I want to also mention choline, which I didn't mention I find in eggs, but your eggs should be scalded or sunny side up, not hard boiled, because you get more choline, which makes acetyl choline in your brain. That is so important for memory function and muscle function and coordination. Um, brain boosting herbs, I mentioned to you before, they're there again in this last slide here, and they're gonna be important. Here are some brands of supplements that are gonna be helpful for you guys. Things like um, Pure Encapsulation, it's a good brand of ginkgo biloba. It might be a little more pricey, but you get what you pay for. If you buy a cheap brand for $10, you're gonna get a $10 product. Um, Designs for Health is a pretty new brand on the market, but they have very good production techniques and they guarantee um, their, their, their authenticity and their quality is guaranteed. Um, this ginkgo biloba, I've seen ginkgo biloba have a thousand milligrams in some, in, in some, some, some of the brands. Ginkgo biloba is a blood thinner. If you take too much, it can thin your blood and if you're taking aspirin, it can make you bleed. So you need to take this in between 100 to maximum 300 milligrams per day, not 500 and 1,000. They will put those numbers on the label to make you think it's better, but it's going to be more harmful. So 100 to 300 milligrams of ginkgo biloba per day is what you really need. These are two excellent brands. Here's another brand of product. Um, so this one here, um, Brain Vital from Designs for Health, has in a number of nutrients that I recommended before that can boost memory. And this is a very good memory supplement, but you have to do all the other things I mentioned. You have to sleep, you have to eat properly, you have to exercise. And so these things will work to boost your memory. Um, Foreign is another good brand that you can trust almost everything they make. It's a pretty pricey brand, but here they have a memory active supplement that has ashwagandha, ginkgo biloba, um, lutein and zeaxanthin for your eyesight. And it's a very good brain supplement. And if you look at the ginkgo uh, dosing, it is 240 milligrams right within um, the, the, the recommended dose range. And it's from the leaf um, of the plant, which is where most of the ginkgo biloba supplement comes from. And Neuro Nectar from Berry Treasure, another excellent brand for those who don't like tablets, you can take this brain supplement in liquid form. And this is gonna help you a lot. Now, we mentioned a few things, guys. And I want to be able to remember what I said because this is a memory seminar, right? Now, to remember everything in the presentation, guys, we're going to use the same technique again. This is how we're going to do it, right? So we did mention, right, that um, you're going to, uh, let me just go through here. Um, so from, we're going to use your body again to remember what we spoke about, right? How to remember, how to improve your memory. So the first thing we spoke about was to learn to focus, right? So learn to focus. You're going to imagine a big spider on your head top. And this spider is pressing his tentacles into your acupressure points. So there's one of his tentacles on your forehead in the middle. There are two to the sides. You are two to the box around here, right? And he's stretching one way down to your foot. So this big spider's on your head and he's pressure. And that's about focus, guys. So that helps you to focus, right? The next thing that you want to look at um, is your brain exercises, right? That's the next thing that we talk about. And the brain exercise, you're going to imagine that your ears have hands. Two big, strong hands with muscles are on your ears. And they are lifting your brain out of your skull and you're pushing up, doing uh, what we call shoulder presses with your brain. So your ears are hands. You're coming from head top, come down to your ears. Ears are doing exercises with your brain, brain exercises, right? 
and you come from your ears and you're going down to your neck. We're going to talk about sleep. So you imagine that you're in an airplane and you have those little airplane, you know, horseshoe shaped pillows around your neck. You're lying on it and you're sleeping. So that's the third thing you need to remember to sleep, right? Stress reduction. You're in the plane still if you want to be or wherever you want to be and somebody is massaging your shoulders. That's right down to your shoulder. You come in and massaging your shoulders. So that's stress reduction. That's remember that, right? And then stress reduction, we're going to talk about exercise. So we come from shoulders down to arms. And in the gym now, you're actually doing those, you're lifting up two huge um, dumbbells in the gym and you're working in with your arms. That's to remind you to exercise. And of course, nutrition. You're coming onto your belly. Imagine now that your belly has a zipper. You pull the zip open and coming out of your belly is all these foods you're seeing here. Avocado you're seeing beetroot juice running down on the floor, blood on the floor, berries, broccoli dropping out of your belly on the floor, celery, coconut oil running on your leg, everything, all the food, chocolate is dropping in your region to pick up the chocolate to eat it, right? Egg is mashing out of your belly and running down. So imagine this whole heap of food running out of your belly as the zipper is pulled down. And you're so scared and so frightened that you begin to run. And as you run, you're tripping over. What you're tripping over on the floor, there is a whole pill, buckle, and vitamins, so you see. Ginseng and fish oil on the floor, and you're sliding in them, you're running. So imagine all that now, guys. So now, everybody, what did I speak about in the presentation? First thing on the head top, focus. Remember that? Second thing with the ears, brain exercises. Cool. Neck will come to now. Sleep. Shoulder, massage, relaxation, rest and relaxation. Cool. Come to your arms, exercise. Yeah? Come down to your belly, nutrition, food. What's on the ground you're running? Supplements, herbs, vitamins. That's it. You would have remembered the entire presentation with just that simple memory technique. Now, I open the floor for questions. Does anybody have any questions before we close off the next few minutes of this lovely presentation? Get into it, people. Doc, doc, um, is Jigbo good for cholesterol reduction? All right, hold on. I'll get to that question from TikTok first. TikTok asking, is banana good for your brain? Um, banana is not a known brain food. Banana is a very good food to provide you with carbohydrates to help you give, get energy. It has potassium to lower your blood pressure. Banana is very easy to digest. And you can eat a ton of banana per day without putting on weight. It's very nourishing. But I wouldn't put banana in my top 10 list of foods for your brain. Um, some people say green banana, skin of iron, and so on. Um, so banana is a good food to eat, but I wouldn't say banana is a top brain food, all right? So you're asking if ginkgo biloba is good for your cholesterol? Yeah, so um, ginkgo biloba and cholesterol, I don't know of any major studies that has proven that ginkgo biloba is a blood thinner. So it can thin your blood and prevent strokes and heart attack and so on. Um, ginkgo biloba is a memory enhancer, as I said before. I wouldn't go giving you ginkgo biloba for your cholesterol. If you have high cholesterol and you want something to reduce it naturally, then you're going to be looking at things like your red yeast rice. I'm looking at things like your garlic, aged garlic extract. That's very good, right? You're going to be looking at um, things like there are a couple of supplements on the market that we use a lot. There's one called cholesterol, which contains plant sterols. Those are very good to reduce cholesterol. And we have uh, oh, we have Dr. Um, Nicholas online, so he could chip in and help with some of these questions. He may want to add some other herbs to the cholesterol. Yes. Good, good evening, Doc. Well done on the presentation. Quite interesting. Um, so ginkgo increases the blood flow to the small capillaries in the body, so the brain is well served. Um, also, it helps with hypertension as well, and it also helps the eyes. So for people with vision trouble, um, macular degeneration and so forth, um, <coughs> ginkgo will help them. And also it actually benefits men who are going through some erectile dysfunction because the small capillaries in the reproductive area also get surface from ginkgo. So ginkgo is actually a very good herb and 240 milligrams is an optimal dose. So that's around the area that you want to um, use your ginkgo. 
But Doc, I also wanted to add something too, because a lot of our people are challenged by pornography today. And research have actually shown that pornography, um, addiction to it actually weakens the brain and tramples your memory. And some research have actually shown that the brain of a porn addict looks worse than the brain or similar to the brain of a drug addict. So if that's a challenge that our people have, we have to pray, be prayerful in asking God to help us to conquer it, right? Because it's really deleterious to the brain. Yes. All right, awesome. Um, uh, yeah, one more, one more thing, Doc. Um, uh, bananas, because of the high potassium and the B complex, actually is classified as um, a good brain fuel food, right? Primarily the ripe bananas. Okay. Right. Ripe banana, so, B complex vitamins. Yeah. So those help with the yes. brain. All right. Great. Yes. All right. All right. Anybody else? Any more questions? Okay, um, I had my hand raised. Uh, right, thought that you were using the race and feature. Ron Hinton asking. Should I go? Asking what's the name of the study? Um, Charmaine, which study are you referring to? I. Which study are you referring to? Referring to? I Charmaine, think it's Charmaine. a study that Doctor Nicholas um asked about um, um spoke to regarding pornography. Okay, it's it's in um Doctor Neil Nedley's book. I think depression, the way out. Um, if it's not in depression, it's in Proof, Proof Positive by Dr. Neil Nedley. So those two are tremendous books um, that have some information on things that affect the brain. But primary, I think it's What should about be in other depression. addictions? What about other addictions? How do they affect the brain? For example, coffee has a lot of caffeine in it. Yes. So, so anything that overstimulates the brain, overstimulation, um, is classified as innervation, right? And innervation leads to toxemia. So you can be overstimulated by um, caffeine. You can be overstimulated by lack of sleep. You can be overstimulated by even um, too frequent um, sexual activity, right? So anything that overstimulates- So just as pornography is not good for the brain, does that mean coffee is not good for the brain? So- Caffeine is, it, it boosts blood flow, but it actually has this um, uh, characteristics where it crashes you after an hour or two, right? So the caffeine gives you this boost, but unfortunately the caffeine also causes you to crave sugar. So it's a stimulant, so it can overstimulate the brain. So then when you overstimulate the brain or overstimulate the body, then you can have a higher cortisol release a higher cortisol release can indicate a higher insulin release. A higher insulin signals fat storage, right? So it's, um, it's uh, some people, most people actually better find another um, brain stimulant like the ginseng or the adaptogens, the rhodiola, the ashwagandha, right? Those are endocrine balancing, right? Caffeine also disrupts the pineal gland, which is the sleep center in the brain, right? And also in Dr. Nedley's book, you'll also find that caffeine use actually causes over time a reduction in blood flow to the frontal lobe, so, which is classified as depression, right? And he goes as far as to say that all caffeine users will have some level of depression, no matter how um, high that person functions, but there could be some level of reduction in blood flow to the brain um, just because of frequent caffeine use. Thank you. So one more thing too, Doc. Um, the Pediatric Association just released some information that youngsters between the ages of two to five who are regularly stimulated by um, the screen for more than three hours per day actually have lower IQs when they get to nine years old and they, they do very poorly on their literacy tests compared to the other children who don't get frequent screen time. So we also have a, a duty to protect the minds and the brain of the young 
if we want them to be engineers and to be useful in the society. David. Doc, you there? It's possible that he may have gotten a little bit disconnected. Um, so thank you for being there, Dr. Nicholas. Is there do we have any more questions? Yes, I have I one have question. question. Um, um I was I asking was asking a, a, well, good well, night, good everyone. Night, everyone. Multitasking. multitasking does, does multitasking, multitasking do any do damage to the brain, brain. like a lot like of a lot of tasking. Tasking. Doing, doing different, different things, things at one given time. time um if, if doc is not back yet, yet, yet i can yeah, answer I can that so 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 there's so some there's level some of stress, stress that is actually that is good good i'm hearing some feedback can you hear me clearly i'm hearing it too yeah, um, let me tell you, go, electricity go ahead, gone go in Old Harbor. Harbor. Hold on, Miss, Miss Elizabeth. Electricity gone in Old Harbor, so maybe that has affected Dr. Thomas. There's no okay, electricity. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. All right. Um, um, let me try it. So, so multi is going to exercise, to exercise the, brain. the brain. Right. right. Let me, let me, I'm driving, I'm driving. So, so let me so try and check this off the car speaker. All right, guys, sorry about that, but my light, 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 Okay, Doc, there was a question, and I was going to answer, so I'll let you answer it. Yes, so I was... The impact of multitasking on the brain. What is the question? How does multitasking act, affect the brain? Right, so let, let. Should I go Should ahead I go and ahead rephrase ahead. the question? So I heard, so I heard, so I heard so a question. Okay. How does multitasking affect your brain? So yeah, I doing a lot of things at the same time. Early. You guys can hear me. That when you're multitasking, Yes, yeah, so you are not able to focus on any one thing. You are so rapidly switching between multiple tasks, paying divided attention to each one. So if you're doing three things at once, so you're on the phone talking, you're trying to type something, and you're you know having something else in front of you watching, then you're actually paying maybe 30% of attention to each one. Hello. David. David. Lexi. Go on here, bed. You go see a present. You go take it. Go turn it on a bit. Did you get your question answered, Trisha? Did you hear that? We didn't hear didn't hear anything, Dr. Chipot. I'm not hearing anything at all. I am hearing it. a gentleman telling the child to go to her bed. Uh, all right. All right. Well, 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 Doc is trying to come back. Let me try and explain. So when you're multitasking, it does exercise the brain, but it can also stress out the brain because you're sharing your attention between multiple tasks at the same time. Depending, depending on how intense, intense those tasks, those tasks are, are, you can you actually, can actually increase, increase your stress, your stress levels, levels, which actually is damaging, damaging to, the to the brain. Depending, depending on how frequent, on how frequent you, have you have 
those sorry it's very hard to hear and understand because it's echoing so we're not, we're not comprehending what you're, what you're saying. saying okay okay I can rephrase, Dr. Dr. Nicholas, do you want me to rephrase what you just said? Are you yes, guys able yes. to hear me clearly? Charmaine, can you hear me clearly or no? Yes, I can. Okay, what Dr. Nicholas was saying, and it's the same thing that Dr. Thomas was trying to say, is that um, in terms of the impact of... Um, task switching is which is what is what is what is it's the most accurate term for it when we're doing multiple things at the same time is that we are not really able to focus on one thing so in terms of impact is that you're not you're you're not actually um completing um one particular ta task your brain is actually being stretched stretched all over the place and, and Dr. Nicholas was just explaining that depending on how complex each of that task is, you're actually increasing your stress, which is going to affect things like your memory. Yes, yes. so it does, so it does have, have a benefit, benefit. If, the, if the multiple task, multitasking is not a consistent activity. So if it's a short-term boost where you have to get things done for projects, um, that may actually help to exercise the brain. But if you are thrust in an environment where you have to always be performing at that level, then it will affect your brain negatively. Thank you so much. Um, I'll take maybe two more questions and given the situation with the um, the light, we'll probably call it a night. So may I have, um, you can give me two more questions and that'll be it. Thank you for staying on Dr. Nicholas. Dr. Thomas, are you there? You're welcome. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. here. Well, I'm gonna, 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 he's very he's very go ahead. Okay, I'll take two more questions. Okay then, looks like there's no more questions. So. Um, with that, Dr. Thomas, I just want to thank you for a very informative presentation. I did put in the chat um, our group. I put a plug in here for a group. So we do have a group where Dr. Um, Thomas um, continue his education adventure. Um, it's called Be Healthy Family, just in case you're new here or you got invited here. I posted an invite to the chat. So you'll just click on that and it will take you to um, the group. So um, until our next seminar, just want to um, wish you guys a fantastic evening and have a great week. Bye-bye for now. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you guys for coming. Bye-bye.